Hey, welcome back into the shop. Today what I think we're going to do is talk about cylinder drift and pressure intensification. So the first thing I think we should look at is uh, what's going to happen here. Let's draw a little cylinder out. Okay, it's a differential cylinder. And let's throw a load on it here. And this load, whatever force times pressure, works out to about a thousand PSI. Okay, so from this cylinder, we're going into a directional control valve. And the center of that control valve, the work ports, are closed. So if I put a pressure gauge in this, if I put a pressure gauge in here, and I put a pressure gauge in here, the load is trying to extend the cylinder. So this one would read zero, and this one would read somewhere around a thousand PSI. Okay, so now let's go and imagine the piston seals on the cylinder have failed. They started leaking or they blew out or something. So that means this pressurized oil inside the cylinder can leak from one side into the other. All right. So what's going to happen to that cylinder? And what's going to happen to my pressure gauges? Awesome. That's right. The cylinder is going to extend out because it's a differential cylinder. There's a difference in volume from the rod side to the barrel side. So if I've got a difference in here, and this side has less volume because the rod is taking up space in the cylinder, this oil can leak across and fit in this side of the cylinder. So the rod is going to extend. Now what's gonna happen with our pressures? If this oil can fit into over there, the rod's gonna extend, but this oil is not enough volume to physically fill this up. So what we're gonna end up with is a vacuum inside. It's actually going to cavitate the cylinder because there's not enough oil inside and there's no way for oil to get inside the cylinder to fill up the space. So inside the cylinder will be less than atmospheric pressure. So anytime that a load is trying to extend a differential cylinder and the seals fail, it will drift. So now let's look at the opposite. So we have the same cylinder, same directional control valve, closed work port, and let's put the same load on it. And let's say that load is worth a thousand PSI. So this 1,000 PSI of load, whatever that works out to, is pushing the cylinder in. So that means this oil in the cylinder has to hold the load. So if I put a pressure gauge there, it's going to read about a 1,000. This gauge here, nothing really being held there. It should be about zero. The seals on this cylinder fail, and the oil can transfer from the high pressure side to the low. Oil always wants to flow from high pressure to low pressure. The difference is, is that this oil in here, it's a larger volume. So if this oil has to transfer into here and let the load come down, this oil physically has to fit in there. And theoretically, oil isn't compressible, so it can't fit in there. So if it can't fit in this side, the cylinder can't come down but this oil became that oil, or that oil became this oil, however you want to look at it. So if this is a thousand PSI and it leaks across into a closed circuit here, pressure's equal and undiminished on all areas, that means this gauge must have also went to a thousand PSI. So if there's a thousand PSI on both sides of the cylinder, that means I have oil pushing up and down all the way across the bottom and 
if the same oil is on top because the seals are leaking, this oil is now up here, so that means it's going to be pushing up and down on this side. So now the oil is all the same inside there. So if I've got a thousand PSI pushing up here and the same thousand PSI pushing down, that means this one is cancelled out by this one, this one cancelled out by that one, and same thing happens on these side. These ones are cancelled out by these ones. So now the only hydraulic force that's left over is the force directly below the rod. And if we go back to our original formula, force equals pressure area, so force equals pressure times the area, the force, the thousand, hasn't changed, whatever this force is, our load hasn't changed, the area that was pushing up across the whole side of the piston is now limited to the area of only the rod, so our area's got a lot smaller. So just for a math example, let's say this is uh, 10,000 pounds of force, the piston, the full bottom, all the area around here, let's say it was 10 inches squared, okay? So the pressure is a force divided by area, 10,000 pounds per side 10, that equals 10,000 pounds divided by 10 inches squared equals 1,000 pounds per inch squared. Now if the rod area is only 2 inches squared, the area of the rod, that's the only difference on the bottom that's holding it up. So that means this 10,000 pounds is now being supported by only 2 square inches. Do the math again, 10,000 pounds divided by 2 inches squared, that equals 5,000 PSI. So that means this gauge now must read 5,000 PSI. If the seals have blown, which we said they have, and oil can transfer from side to side, oil's equal and diminished in all directions. That means this side also has 5,000 PSI. So now my machine is holding a relatively light load in the air, and normally under normal circumstances this would only be a thousand, and we can't see it unless we have gauges in there, it's now holding up there's 5,000 PSI on both sides and in the lines as well. So if a line bursts, let's say the lines are only good for 3,000 PSI and the line ruptures, the load free falls to the ground, doing damage or killing us. So pressure intensification is something to be aware of and very cautious of. So just as a recap, if a load is pushing a cylinder towards retraction and it's a differential cylinder like this one is, if the piston seals fail, it will pressure intensify, which means it all becomes the same. The only area that's able to hold the load up now is the area directly below the rod because on the other sides outside the rod, you have the same down force as up force. So only the rod area is going to hold the load. The pressure on both sides of the cylinder is going to rise until whatever our pressure is required to hold our load in the air, and it'll sit there. The load will not drop. Now, for those of you that have experienced this in real life, you'll be like, hmm, in actuality, the load does drop a little bit, and then it stops. So they know the seals are leaking. They lift the load up with the control valve, they block the control valve, the load comes down and stops and doesn't come down any further. In real life, that does happen. In theory, if you want to say the load doesn't come down, go ahead and uh, you're fine with that. If you want to know why the load physically comes down a little bit and stops, 
There's two reasons mainly. One is we say oil is uncompressible, theoretically uncompressible. In real life, it does compress a little bit. So as the pressure goes up in the cylinder, the oil becomes a little bit more dense. That's going to allow more of this oil to fit over here. The load will come down slightly. Secondly, the hoses are wire mesh encased in rubber. As the pressure increases, the hose expands. So low pressure, high pressure. Low volume, high volume. More oil fits in the hoses. So that means more of this oil can fit in the hoses. The load will come down a little bit due to that. And third and finally, the cylinder itself physically expands the more pressure you put on it. More pressure, bigger, bigger volume, load comes down. But once everything finishes expanding and compressing, the load no longer moves. So I hope you found that interesting and uh, you got something out of it. And like always, thanks for watching.